to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ god is light and in him is no darkness at all first john chapter 1 Verse number five, we welcome you today to our study of the book of First John. We're so glad that you've joined us, and as always, we want to encourage you to locate your Bible and have it handy as we're going to study the encouraging book of First John about walking in God's light and walking in God's love. Today's lesson is being brought to you by individual congregations and members of the Churches of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. You'll find people there who love the Lord, who are concerned about going by exactly what the Bible says, and who have a genuine love for the souls of men and women. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to learn more about the Lord's Church or the plan of salvation or, or anything in the Scripture, You'll find Christians there who'd love to sit down with you and study the Word of God just like we would here at the Gospel of Christ as well. In fact, we want to encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our videos, audios, all our Bible study material free of charge. It's available 24-7 on our website, thegospelofchrist.com. And if you'd like to have a copy of any of our lessons, including today's lesson on 1 John, just fill out a media request form. You can receive a digital download, or if you'd like to have a DVD or a CD in the mail, we'd be happy to make that available to you free of charge. Friend, in the fast-paced world in which we live today, we also make available apps for both the Apple and Android phones found in the respective Play stores or uh, stores there for the Apple app. Please check those out and download them as well. Today we're thinking about a very encouraging book in the New Testament, the book of 1 John. And 1 John is one of my personal favorite books in that its message is encouraging and uplifting. And it, it reminds Christians how we ought to live and how we ought to walk. The book breaks down very naturally into three categories based on the character of God. Chapters 1 and 2, God is light. And as a result... Christians ought to walk in the light. 1 John 1 verse 7. Chapters 3 and 4 to the first part of chapter 5 a little bit. God is love. And thus Christians must be a people of love. And then chapter 5 all the way through the end of that. God is life. And as a result, we have the promise of eternal life in Him. And so we begin today by thinking about John's message in chapters 1 and 2, God is light. And John begins in verse, 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, by showing us that Jesus is the real light of the world. Look in 1 John chapter 1, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in 1 John 1, verses 8 and 9. The Scripture says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then we back up, of course, to 1 John chapter 1, about verses 1 through 4, and we learn that that light that we're to walk and live in is Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. Uh, John 8 verse 12, do you remember what the Lord said in the Gospel of John? I am the light of the world. You know, when you think about the idea of light, imagine yourself going into a dark room, reaching over and flipping the light switch, and the whole room transforms. You can see the darkness is gone. Friend, in, in a world that is filled with sin and sadness and, and, and darkness and evil, Jesus is that beacon of light and hope in that world. He's the real light of the world. And Christians, of course, are taught to walk in that light. Psalm 119, verse 105, God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light 
to our past. Psalm 36 verse 9, in your light, the psalmist said, we see light. Now, as we think about Jesus and as we think about God being the true light of the world, part of John's purpose is to convince his hearers that yes, this Jesus, who is the light of the world, really existed. He wasn't a fable. He wasn't a myth. He wasn't just some apparition that somebody made up somewhere. John shows us Jesus truly existed and He was touchable, seeable, and feelable. That's what John wants his readers to remember. He does this by showing the tangible nature of Jesus as the light of the world. Notice 1 John chapter 1, verse number 1. The Scripture records this, That which was from the beginning, which we've heard, listen now, which we've seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. Friend, as we think about Jesus Christ, John is going to give several undeniable proofs to his readers and based on history and the evidence to us as well that Jesus, the true light, did actually exist. How do we know that? John says Jesus was heard. By many. And friend, that's so true. People heard his preaching. Mark 12, verse 37, the common people heard him gladly. Can you imagine the multitudes in the first century that gathered at the Sermon on the Mount and heard Jesus with their ears, heard him preaching? They heard the Lord weep in the town of Bethany where Lazarus was. Jesus wept. Imagine the ears that heard the Savior weep. They heard him cast down the demon in Mark chapter 5 where that demon came out of that man. He ran into the, the, the demon's inner, the old swine, and they run violently off the cliff. Imagine what a noise that would have been. They heard the Lord pray, Our Father who art in heaven. They heard him rebuke the Pharisees in Matthew 22 verse 29. You do therefore greatly err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. And so John begins by helping these people see this Jesus whom we're talking about, a host of people not only know he existed, but heard him. But Jesus was also seen and looked upon. Not an apparition. People actually saw him and looked upon him. He was seen by the wise men in the manger in Luke chapter 2. He was seen by multitudes in the, in the land of Israel as He went about doing good and preaching in their cities and, and healing the sick. He was frequently seen by His disciples. Jesus was seen by governmental leaders, Pilate, uh, other people in that day and age, Herod and others in that day, people who really weren't even Christians saw actually saw the Lord and, and many historians will document this. At one time, after His resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15 tells us He was seen by over 500 after His resurrection. But not only was He seen, not only was He heard, Jesus was handled. That is, people actually touched Him. No doubt by His disciples. As they were with the Lord, they would touch, they would see Him as well. He was touched or handled by evil men. Mark chapter 15 verse 1, they bound the hands of Jesus to do that. He would have been touched. He would have been handled by the Roman rulers. Matthew chapter 27 by Thomas. John chapter 20 verses 30 and 31. He was touched. He was handled. He was seen. This Jesus really existed is John's point. And here's what he's driving at. This word of life, he was actually made known to mankind. Look in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 2 with me. John says this, Concerning the word of life, chapter 1, verse 1, the life was manifest and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you, here's the point, that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. John wants these people to realize this is not a a myth or a fable. The word of life came to life and now because of that, we can have eternal life. John 6, verse 68, verses 66 through 68. Jesus had made some hard statements. Some of His disciples walked with Him no more. And Jesus turned to the rest and said, Do you want to go away also? And Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of life. Jesus is the only way a person can live a life that results in eternal life. You see, my friend, everything here now 
touchable, feelable, seeable, it's going to be gone one day. It's not going to exist forever. Life is very brief and everything in it is very brief. The only way you can have hope is through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him. He's able to save to the uttermost completely those who come to God through Him because He ever lives to make intercession for them. And thus, the message of Jesus Christ, the true Word of life, friend, that ought to bring great joy. How does this message affect us? What kind of response to the idea that Jesus really existed, He's the Word of life, and you could have eternal life through Him? What kind of message, what kind of response does that give? Notice 1 John chapter 1. Verse number four, the Bible records this. And these things, very simply John says, and these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Hey, you don't have to doubt. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to have a sliver of hope and maybe not hope at times. No, when, when you look at the evidence and you look at what it means to follow Christ and who He was, you leave with joy and hope in your heart. And for Him, don't we all need that? Doesn't everybody really want to live a life of happiness and joy? Isn't that what we're looking for? How to find peace? How to find happiness? How to find real joy in this life? Friend, the message of Jesus Christ is a message that ought to bring great joy into your heart. Paul would say, rejoice in the Lord always and again, I say rejoice. Acts 6, 16, verse 25. Paul and Silas were in a, a deep, dark prison in Philippi. And listen to this. And they were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Even there, they found great joy. You know, when the Ethiopian eunuch obeyed the gospel, that man found the word of life. He obeyed the gospel. He is now headed back to Ethiopia. And the Bible says he went on his way rejoicing. Well, why then? Why is it that, that Christians have such joy in their life? Because we have God in our life. And listen to this. God is our source of light. Nobody wants to live in darkness. Nobody wants to walk around in darkness. We are not creatures who flourish in the darkness. We need light. God is that light. Look at 1 John chapter 1, verse number 5 with me. The Bible says this. This is the message we have heard from Him and declared to you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. You know, the ideas of light and darkness aren't just, aren't just amounts of sunshine and amounts of uh, lack thereof. The idea of light and darkness carries with it that which is good, that which is right, that which is holy, and darkness naturally would be that which is evil, that which is sinful, and that which is wicked. Christians, because of Jesus Christ and God being the light, we have that light in our lives. Psalm 36 verse 9 again says, In your light we see light. God's Word is the light. Psalm 119 verse 15. And Leviticus 11 verse 4, 44 tells us, as well as 1 Peter 1 verses 14 and 15, that we can be holy as He who called us is holy. We, we've all made mistakes. We've all done things that aren't right. But if I'm a child of God, I have God's light and hope and joy in my heart. And that allows me to live completely different than everybody else. I want you to think about this idea with me as well. Going along the idea of the light, if I'm going to claim to be a follower of Christ, if I'm going to claim that I've got God's light in my life, that requires something of me. That means that I've got to try every day to walk in the light. Look at 1 John chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. John says this, If we say, we have fellowship with Him, with God, and walk in darkness. We lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. Friend, there's a, there's a privilege, there's an obligation, and there's a responsibility that goes along with having the God of light in your life. And that is every one of us 
wants to try every day to walk in the light. If we, if we walk in darkness, we don't practice the truth, we're living a lie. That, that's not a real life to live. You're a hypocrite, you're living a lie, you're, you're just being an actor up on the stage. But, listen to the joy of this, okay? If we walk in the light, as God Himself is in the light, watch the benefit, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. I have fellowship with other Christians. I have a family. The family of God is now my family. And I have fellowship with God in that all my sins are washed away. There is that cleansing of sin in my life. As I confess, as I repent of that, verses 8 and 9, as I try to live the right life, the blood of Jesus Christ that paid the price for my sin and for yours. And so, as Christians, let's do our best. None of us are perfect, but let's do our best to, to, to not walk in darkness and to have that light in our life every day. Ephesians 5.11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Rather, we're to expose them. 2 Corinthians 6, verses 14 through 17, Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And so, we want to have fellowship with God and other Christians by really trying to live like a Christian each and every day. And thus, Christians must walk in the light and live as God wants them to live. Now, to walk in the light, that doesn't mean that we're perfect. Walking in the light also means we recognize sin and we're willing to confess that. Look in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. The Bible says, If we say we have no sin... We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. To walk in the light means that we come to the realization, I do sin. The only person who's perfect is the Lord Jesus Christ. He was tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. What about me and you? We try to walk in the light. We try to live right. We try to do the best we can. But from time to time, we all make mistakes. Part of walking in the light means we recognize that. Uh, listen to Romans 3.23. All have sinned. Fall short of the glory of God. Well, what do you mean all have sinned? Romans 3 verse 10. None righteous, no not one. At my best, what can I say? I'm an unworthy servant. I've only done that which is my duty to do. Luke 17, 10. All our righteousness, it's like filthy rags in and of ourselves. Listen to Ecclesiastes 7, verses 26 through 29. This is kind of summary of everything we're saying. There's not a righteous man on the face of the earth who does good and does not sin. Even the most righteous from time to time sin. I've got to be big enough to recognize I do sin and I've got to do what God tells me to do. If we walk in the light, see us in the light, we've got that fellowship, we've got to con uh, recognize we sin and we've got to confess that sin. The idea of confessing, sometimes that gets skewed a little bit. The, the literal word there for confessing means to lay alongside of. Confessing is not as though God, you don't know this, but I'm about to tell you. Mom and Dad, I stole a cookie out of the cookie jar and you didn't know it, but I'm like, no, that's not the idea. Confessing means, sin means we lay alongside of. God already has His divine record. Does God know all things? Sure He does. Does God know when I sin? Absolutely. When I confess that, I am laying alongside of, here's God's record, I am owning up to it and laying alongside of that, and I'm acknowledging. And the Bible tells us that's a big part of it. James 5, 16 and 17, if we confess our sins to one another and pray for one another, the Bible says we can be healed. Now, this is one of the reasons that the Bible was given to God's people. This is one of the reasons God gave us the Scripture, and that is to help us prevent sin in our life and to help us walk in the light. Do I realize I'm going to sin from time to time? Sure. But if I've got a guide on how to walk. If I have a, a pattern to follow, that's going to help me to be more in the light and to avoid darkness more, right? That's what the Bible is all about. Look in 1 John chapter 2, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says in verse 1. John says, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Friend, aren't you thankful today? 
We've got the Bible. Where would my life and yours be without the Scripture? You see, the psalmist said in Psalm 119, verses 10 through 12, Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. It's the same today as it was for Cain in Genesis 4, verse 7. God told Cain, sin lies at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. How do you master? How do you overcome? How do you defeat sin? By knowing it. By knowing how to defeat it. By knowing what it does to man. And the Word of God tells us exactly that. I am to receive the, with meekness the implanted Word, which is able to save our souls. The Bible says we can overcome Him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto the death. Christians in the first century use God's Word to overcome sin. Now, classic example, Matthew chapter 4. Jesus is tempted in the wilderness by Satan. Satan throws everything he has at him. If you're the Son of God, command these stones to be bread. Throw yourself off the temple. And Satan tries everything. How did Jesus defeat Satan? It is written... It is written, it is written. Friend, if I'm going to overcome sin and really walk in the light as God wants me to, I've got to use His Word to do that. Now, walking in the light and using the Word of God means that we've got to do what God says. We, to walk in the light, I've got to keep God's commandments, right? We're not talking about earning our salvation, but I've got to do what the Bible says. You can't follow God and ignore His Word, right? Look in 1 John chapter 2. And that's exactly what John teaches us next. 1 John chapter 2, look in verses 3 through 5. By this we know, we know Him. How? It's very simple. If we keep His commandments. He who says, I know Him and does not keep His commandments is a liar and the truth is not in us. But whoever keeps His word, truly the love of God is perfected in Him. By this we know that we are in Him. Friend, you can't be a child of God. We can't walk in the light and, and not do what the Bible says. Think about the Word. This is so plain and so simple. Think about what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21. Jesus said, not everybody, not everybody who looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, is going there. Well, who is? He who does the will of my Father in heaven. Luke 6, 46, Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not do the things which I command. He's the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. Hebrews 5 verses 8 and 9. And friend, this sums up the whole duty of man. Solomon said as he searched for meaning and purpose and grappled with what life was about, he found that conclusion. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Revelation 22, 14, blessed are those who do His commandments. And so we've got to follow the Bible and do what it says to really walk in the light and be pleasing to God. But you know, the great thing about walking in the light is there's a wonderful pattern to follow. If I'll follow the pattern of Jesus and I walk as He walked, I'll be walking in the light. Look at 1 John 1. Where's the pattern to follow? Where's the example of that? Look at 1 John chapter 2, verse number 6. Here's the pattern to follow. The Bible says, He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as Jesus walked. Friend, the perfect way, the, the, the pattern to follow, the example to hold up on how to live, how to make sure you live a life that's pleasing to God, is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let the mind of Christ dwell in you. Philippians 2 verse 5. 1 Peter 2 21. We're to walk in His footsteps. Paul said, imitate me, not, not of myself, as I also imitate Christ. In Acts 4 verse 13, the Bible tells us of the leaders of, of, of Peter and John that when they spoke so boldly, the people realized they had been with Jesus. Friend, that's what I want to do. I want to study the life of Christ. I want to have the mind of Christ. I want to love what Jesus loved. I want to hate what He hated. I want to try to live my life in the pattern and in the way that the Lord and Savior lived His life. And friend, to do that, you can't love the world. 
Look with me in 1 John chapter 2. You can't be in love with God and the world at the same time. Look in chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. The Bible records this. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, lust of flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Friend, if you're really going to live a life, that brings honor and glory to God. If, if you're going to show God's light in your life, part of walking in the light means I'm not in love with the world. Someone says, well, what does that mean? Does that mean I can't enjoy things with it? That's not the idea. Does that mean we can't see the beauty of the world and, and be in all of that? Again, that's not what he's talking about. Being in love with the world means we give it first place. Solomon did that. Solomon had wisdom from God from on high. And yet, Moments later, just a little bit later, he got caught up in the world. He's trapped by all the lust and the desires and the passion of it, and he's put that in first place. Paul said of Demas in Colossians 4, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Don't let the, the desires and the passions and, and, and everything in this world get between you and God. That's the idea. And why is that? Listen again. The world and all that's in it is passing away. You know it would be the worst thing about falling in love with the world? Just like that. One day, it'll be no more. Second Peter 3, verses 9 through 12, the earth and all that's in it will be burned up with a fervent heat. This side, the earth, the touchable, all that's temporary. And if I put my, all my interests there, then friend, I've missed out on what really matters. And so our hope and encouragement today is that you'll walk in the light, that you'll realize God is that light, and that you'll live a life pleasing to Him. If you're not a child of God, friend, we'd love to encourage you today to become one. Do you believe in Jesus? John 8, verse 24. Would you turn from a life of sin? Luke 13, verse 3. Would you confess His name before men? Matthew 10, 32 and 33. And would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Acts 2, verse 38. Then rising out of that, let's each try to live in such a way that we're walking in the light, and honoring God. Join us next time as we study more from 1 John. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the